Some things in life take a very long time, like painting a beautiful masterpiece or achieving a bodybuilder's physique like my own. Creations of epic length happen across various mediums. We have long pieces of music, film and literature, and the same is true of wrestling. And although WWE are by no means the biggest culprit when it comes to very long matches, we're looking at you, New Japan, Vince has certainly booked his fair share of them over the years. But of course we have to remember that a long match doesn't necessarily equal a good match. And even though quite a few of them are good, this video isn't ranked in order of quality, it's strictly about length. I'll grow up. It's worth mentioning that we're sticking to pay-per-views only for this video, so no Cena vs Michaels and no Seth Rollins in that huge gauntlet match a couple of years ago. Maybe that's a video for another time, but for now we're talking about proper wrestling. The kind you actually have to pay for. Oh and also we're not counting Royal Rumbles because then this list would be entirely Royal Rumbles. With that in mind, I'm Adam Pachisi from Cultaholic.com and these are the 10 longest pay-per-view matches in WWE history. Joy Join us. But first up, a brief honourable mention. Let's quickly go back to Payback 2017 and everyone's favourite match of all time, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton's House of Horrors. A quick refresher, after their big title feud ended with insects being projected onto the canvas at WrestleMania, WWE decided, hey we're onto something good here, let's keep it going. So despite ending up on different brands thanks to the superstar shakeup, Wyatt and Orton faced each other one more time. Orton travelled via limousine to Bray's House of Horrors, they brawled hilariously all over the place and then showed up to the pay-per-view a little while later to finish the match. Apparently the House of Horrors is pretty near the SAP Centre in San Jose. Jinder Mahal interfered to cost Randall the match, but Bray didn't win the title because the gold wasn't even on the line. It was great. Anyway, according to Wikipedia, it's impossible to determine the exact length of this match due to its half pre-taped nature. So sorry to all the House of Horrors mega fans out there, and we know you're watching, this only gets an honourable mention. Now onto the top 10. Number 10, the 7 way elimination chamber match at Elimination Chamber 2018. 40 minutes, 15 seconds. We are surprised to reveal that this is the only Elimination Chamber match in this video, and therefore stands as the longest chamber bout of all time. That makes sense, because WWE only went and threw in an extra competitor, those crazy cats. With Roman Reigns, John Cena, Braun Strowman, Elias and The Miz already confirmed, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt battled it out to see who the final entrant would be. Balor and Rollins both pinned Bray at the same time, making this the first seven-man elimination chamber in history. The build to this one was excellent by the way. On the go-home Raw, all seven competitors took part in a mammoth gauntlet match, which ate up almost two hours of TV time. It was totally out of the blue, completely at odds with WWE's modern booking style, and on the whole, brilliant. And then the pay-per-view came around, and after all that fascinating build-up, everything came crashing back down to normality. It wasn't a bad match, just an underwhelming one, as Braun eliminated fan favourite after fan favourite with his running power slam. Finn Balor? Goodbye. Seth Rollins? You're dead. John Cena? Not today, pal. The winner would receive a WrestleMania title shot against Brock Lesnar, and even though Strowman had eliminated all the most popular babyfaces, at least it was leading to a fresh matchup down the line. Then, Roman speared him twice and won. If you listen closely, you can hear the internet crying from here. It wasn't all bad news for Braun, however, as he did win gold at WrestleMania after all, in the tag division, with a child. Number 9, the 20-man Survivor Series elimination tag match at Survivor Series 1988, 42 minutes and 12 seconds. It's honestly a miracle that Survivor Series has held on to its Big Four status as long as it has. We're surprised that Vince hasn't gotten bored and replaced it, especially with groovy modern concepts floating around like Money in the Bank and Saudi Arabia. But Survivor Series continues to hang in there like a drunk uncle at a wedding, and we're pleased about that. It's nice to know that in a post-attitude era world, the old-fashioned elimination tag match still has its place. So now let's go back to 1988, the second ever Survivor Series for our next contest. And this wasn't any normal elimination tag, this was a 20-man elimination tag. Now that may sound excessive, and it is, but there's something quite charming about it in hindsight. 
First, let's run down the teams. On the babyface side, we had the Rockers, the Heart Foundation, the British Bulldogs, the Powers of Pain, and the Young Stallions. Representing the heels, Demolition, the Brain Busters, the Fabulous Rougeos, the Bolsheviks, and everyone's favorite, the Conquistadors. The first thing to notice is that, yes, this match looked absolutely ridiculous. The event took place in Richmond Township, Ohio, and when the men on the apron threaten to outnumber the local population, something's not quite right. It's all also noticeable just how loose the structure of this match was, certainly when compared to modern Survivor Series contests. Remember though, WWE fans in 1988 got excited over a drop toehold, so tightly choreographed action wasn't exactly the priority here. A story emerged towards the end though, as Mr. Fuji ditched poor Axe and Smash, allowing Barbarian and Warlord to pick up a tainted victory. A double turn in the middle of a 40 minute elimination tag? Their audacity knows no bounds. On Honestly, this match is quite compelling to look back on in its own rustic way. Then you remember that this was the second bout of a four-match show, all four of which were long elimination tags. And you realise that before internet criticism, WWE were absolutely taking the piss. Number 8, Team Cena vs Team Authority at Survivor Series 2014, 43 minutes 28 seconds. Hooray! Another elimination tag match! We've all been hoping for it, eh? Survivor Series 2014 saw the culmination of the authority angle, sort of. In one corner, Seth Rollins, Kane, Luke Harper, Mark Henry, and Rusev. In the other, John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, Eric Rowan, Big Show, and Ryback. If the heels won, Team Cena would be fired, with the exception of Cena himself. But if the faces won, the authority would be removed from power in WWE. The stakes were high, with the potential of Triple H and Stephanie leaving our screens forever. And if we ignore for a second the fact that they were all over the following year's WrestleMania, and also if we ignore the fact that Triple H actually won the WWE Championship the year after that, it seems like a pretty damn big deal, guys! And the match certainly lived up to the hype, centered around big moments with gradually escalating tension. We had Rusev crashing through the announce table, former partners Rowan and Harper going at it, Big Show switching sides because he's the Big Show, and that's what he does. Perhaps the biggest surprise was that Cena wasn't actually the hero of the match. He'd already been eliminated, leaving Ziggler to bravely battle alone against Kane, Harper, Rollins, and an interfering Triple H. Dolph almost did it on his own, but in a dramatic twist, he was helped out by the debuting Sting. It's 1997 all over again! Where's my Spice Girls CD? My favourite's Emma Bunton, who's yours? With a sizeable helping hand, Ziggler won the match and vanquished the authority forever. Well, actually, they went away for a month and then came back and kept talking quite a lot on TV. Number 7, Edge versus Randy Orton at Backlash 2020, 44 minutes and 45 seconds. 2017 blockbuster The Greatest Showman tells the story of P.T. Barnum, a 19th century shipping clerk who sets up a circus in pursuit of fame and fortune. Met with limited success at first, he adds two professional wrestlers to his act, Adam Copeland and Randall Keith Orton. The pair of them put on the single greatest wrestling match of all time, and everybody becomes rich beyond their wildest dreams. The end. Anyway, so Backlash was weird this year, wasn't it? Yes, Edge and Orton's last man standing match at WrestleMania drew criticism for being too long, but it was their eventual rematch that makes it onto this list, clocking in at almost three quarters of an hour. Preemptively billed as the greatest wrestling match ever, it was almost as if Vince was taking a deliberate shot at smarky internet basement dwellers like like ourselves. And like you as well, let's not dance around that. The theatrics were ramped up even further with piped in ring announcements from the legendary Howard Finkel, and even snippets of the actual bloody song from The Greatest Showman. In fairness to Edge and Orton, the match was an excellent one, easily better than their original WrestleMania contest. And yes, the lack of a live audience allowed it to be pre-recorded and stitched together, but the pair put on a compelling, well-structured match all the same. It was Orton who picked up the win in the end, pulling off a sneaky low blow behind the referee's back and punting Edge in the head to secure victory. Then P.T. Barnum stepped away from the limelight to spend more time with his family and handed control of the circus to Zac Efron, and everyone lived happily ever after. Number 6, Team WWF vs The Alliance at Survivor Series 2001, 44 minutes 57 seconds. It only makes sense that one of the longest matches in WWE history featured the fate of the company itself. You can't really settle that with a 10 minute back and forth, can you? 
you. You probably know the story by now. The invasion angle saw WCW and ECW join forces to crush everyone's favorite federation, leading to this winner-take-all match at Survivor Series. On Team WWF, The Rock, Kane, Undertaker, Chris Jericho, and Big Show. And representing the Alliance, Goldberg, Sting, Ric Flair, DDP, and Hollywood Hulk Hogan. No, 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 only joking. The invasion angle was famously underwhelming, especially for WCW fans, so instead we got Steve Austin, Kurt Angle, Rob Van Dam, Booker T, and Shane McMahon. Yes, Booker and RVD may have been fair choices to represent their respective promotions, but Angle, Shane, and Stone Cold, they're about as WWF as it gets. And even though Austin had wrestled on the other side of the divide earlier in his career, he also kind of won the Monday Night Wars for Vince, didn't he? Thankfully though, the match was still as dramatic and intense as you would expect. Jericho turned on Team WWF, Angle turned on the Alliance, and it all came down to an epic showdown between Rock and Austin. Well, Rock, Austin, and Angle, who was still very much on hand to blast Stone Cold with the title belt, tipping the match fully in the Fed's favor. This was pure Attitude Era sports entertainment, with swerves, turns, interference, and of course, Vince McMahon stealing the limelight in the end. Look at that celebration. You'd think he just pinned Austin himself. Number five, Triple H versus Shawn Michaels at Bad Blood 2004, 47 minutes, 26 seconds. This is a bit of an insider secret, but at certain points of their career, the Click thought quite a lot of themselves. So when Shawn Michaels made his in-ring return in 2002, it makes sense that he and best buddy Triple H would face off in numerous epic length matches, showing the ignorant marks what real wrestling looks like. For the next couple of years, the pair were involved in a lot of drawn out clashes. There was Shawn's excellent comeback in the street fight at SummerSlam and his epic victory in the first ever Elimination Chamber. Things didn't always go quite as well though, as proven by their three stages of hell match at Armageddon 2002 and a last man standing draw at the 2004 Royal Rumble. The longest, however, came at Bad Blood, and by this point fans may have been getting a little bit sick of Hunter vs HBK, so there's only one way to fix that, stick them inside the cell. And so for 47 minutes, Triple H and Shawn Michaels clashed in a mega long Hell in a Cell contest. There were big moments, sure, like Triple H being being immediately busted open, and Sean's elbow drop from the top of a ladder, but generally, despite not being a bad match, this probably should have been a bit shorter. Like a quarter of an hour or so, genuinely nobody would have complained. Triple H won, of course, because this isn't the 90s anymore, Sean, it's all about the game and how you play it. Number 4, Team Raw vs Team Smackdown at Survivor Series 2016, 52 minutes, 55 seconds. Another Survivor Series match? You got it. Here we have the single longest Survivor Series elimination tag match in WWE history, and wouldn't you know it, it was a very good one. Modern versions of this match often feel shallow, with a limited build centered around brand supremacy, which we know the superstars will stop caring about once the pay-per-view is over. But the 2016 version managed to overcome that by openly incorporating the pre-existing relationships of its participants. Whether on the same brand or opposing sides, the competitors made decisions based on friendships and rivalries that had already been well established. We had Styles helping to get Dean Ambrose eliminated despite being on Team SmackDown, as well as all three former Shield members teaming up to powerbomb AJ through the announce table later on. Best friends Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho were both representing the red brand, but got in each other's way when Owens used the list of Jericho as a weapon. KO was disqualified, and a devastated Y2J, still mourning the loss of his beloved list, fell victim to Randy Orton. Speaking of Orton, he continued his excellent Survivor Series record by winning the match alongside Bray Wyatt, and even saved his stablemate from a Roman Reigns spear towards the end of the bout. This was all part of a plan to win Bray's trust, allowing Randy to eventually beat him for the title at WrestleMania. Another example of storylines being allowed to exist within this match, rather than being temporarily put on hold. It's very impressive that a near hour long match managed to stay fresh and exciting all the way through and it was clearly the standout performance of the night. That is no mean feat given the fact that both the women's and tag team divisions put on good elimination matches too and we also had Goldberg squashing Brock Lesnar in the main event. It also gets bonus points in our eyes because Team Smackdown picked up the victory. Everyone prefers Smackdown don't they? Yeah, they do. Number 3, Luke Harper versus Dean Ambrose at Extreme Rules 2015, 56 minutes, 10 seconds. 
The tragic passing of Brody Lee has led to an emotional outpouring of personal stories and career highlights. It's been genuinely wonderful to see and ensures that we'll always look back fondly on a fantastic pro wrestler. But one thing you may have forgotten is the fact that Brody, or Luke Harper at this stage in his career, was part of one of WWE's longest ever pay-per-view bouts. Harper and Dean Ambrose opened Extreme Rules 2015 with a Chicago street fight, and for a while it developed like a normal WWE hardcore match. Match. But then the pair brawled backstage, Harper tried to flee in a vehicle, and Ambrose jumped through the window after him like a grimy little Indiana Jones. If this was the Attitude Era, a camera crew would have surely piled into a nearby truck and followed the action. Instead, the lazy camera crew of today decided they probably weren't being paid enough and stayed in the arena. Bloody millennials. Anyway, the show progressed as normal with no end to the previous match being formally announced. Dolph Ziggler beat Sheamus, The New Day won the tag team titles, and then finally the pair returned and just carried on with their match. Ambrose eventually won with Dirty Deeds, and in an unconventional way, this match stands as one of the longest in WWE pay-per-view history. Isn't this list fun? Number 2, The Rock vs Triple H at Judgment Day 2000, 1 hour, and Randy Orton vs John Cena at Bragging Rights 2009, also 1 hour. There was no way of separating these Iron Man matches as both lasted exactly one hour. You could maybe argue that time seems to go a lot quicker as we get older, which would mean that Rock vs Triple H would be the longer of the two, but that's silly and we won't consider it again. What we're saying though is that we really, really wish we were young again. The effort of all four men in these matches can't be faulted, but we have to give extra credit to Big Dwayne. After battling Triple H, the strongest and best wrestler in all of the galaxy, for an entire hour, he lost because under Taker interfered and accidentally gave Hunter a fall via DQ. That was enough for Triple H to triumph six falls to six and take Rock's title from him in the process. To make matters worse, it wasn't even the cool zombie Undertaker we all know and love. The Phenom had reinvented himself, like when your mates go off to uni and pretend they're really into yoga or real ale. Taker had clearly signed up for the Motorcycle Society at the Freshers' Fair, returning as a weirdly alive biker. Still, the match was an engrossing one and is remembered fondly, even if the American and badass gimmick has more of a mixed response these days. Now on to Bragging Rights 2009, where John Cena and Randy Orton clashed over the very same title. Well, not physically the same. The big globe didn't need glitter and a spinning mechanism to be cool, okay, John? This match had an extra special no DQ stipulation, meaning that Orton could pull out every trick in the book to keep pace with Cena. Those tricks included getting his mates to run out and help, DDTing Cena on the exposed floor, and throwing him clean through a lighting grid. All the classics. Hey Randy, I remember Greg Valentine doing that back in the day. Ultimately though, and you're never going to believe this, Cena actually managed to overcome the odds and win the match. With the scores tied at five apiece and the clock winding down, Big Match Jonathan managed to reverse a punt kick into the STF for a dramatic submission victory. He's knocked your shell off, Randy. He's knocked it right off, he has. Number one, Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 12, one hour, one minute, and 56 seconds. And so we reach number one, and it's sort of fitting in a way. Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart have a lot of differences. One is typically seen as cocky, brash, and arrogant. The other, a more serious and straightforward figure. One wrestles with flair and dynamism, the other with more gritty realness. One repeatedly denies that he is our boy toy, the other is yet to clarify his position. But one thing the pair have in common is that in their prime, they loved showing people how good they were at wrestling. And they did that by wrestling a lot, and putting lots of effort into their wrestling, and doing it for a long time. Never was that more apparent than the main event of WrestleMania 12, an infamous hour-long Iron Man match that continues to divide opinion. Some will see it as wrestling at its finest, two elite professionals going at it for an hour without a single fall scored for either man. Others will say, no falls, that's bollocks. But whatever your opinion, the endurance and dedication of the pair has to be applauded. And even though there were no falls in the regulation 60 minutes, HBK did finally put Brett away in sudden death overtime, nailing a switch in music to finally make his boyhood dream come true. But in all honesty, it's probably not either man's shining WrestleMania moments. One year later, Brett would face Steve Austin in one of the greatest Mania matches of all time, and Sean has had numerous classes to pick from on the grandest stage of them all. But despite that, we can say one thing for certain about this match. 
it's definitely the longest WWE pay-per-view bout of all time. You know what, that's not as profound an ending to this video as we were hoping for, really. Hmm.